Okay, so this is the first of our videos on the new topic of circular functions. Um, there'll be very little in this topic which is um, familiar to you previously, so this will very much be a lot of new content. Um, a small amount of revision of Year 9 and 10 trigonometry um, in the video to come after this one, um, so Sokotoa. Um, but really after that things are very different and in fact um, what this whole topic is about is that trigonometry as you've known it through year 9 and 10 um, is actually uh, not really to do with triangles, it's actually all about circles um, and so we're going to completely change uh, the perspective on that trigonometry. It's certainly a useful tool when working with triangles but its origins come from circles um, and we want to hence um, called circular functions um, and we want to have a look at that. So the first video here is going to be a pretty quick one um, and we just want to look at um, a different scale for measuring angles. So we're all familiar with measuring angles in degrees. Um, it's certainly very intuitive for us if someone tells you, you know, to draw a 30 degree angle for example, you would have some sense of how, that, how big that is and you could draw that. In the same way that when we're measuring um, you know, lengths, for example, we use, there are difference of um, units of measurement scale that we can use. And I'm not just talking about the difference between centimetres and metres, which are part of the same scale, but a different um, unit. Um, I'm instead talking about, for example, the difference between centimetres and inches. Okay, so a completely different scale with which we can measure length. Um, and that's true for angles as well. And when we're working uh, with circular functions, we tend to work in this new measure of angle, well not new, but for us new, measure of angle called radians rather than degrees. Um, and there are a number of reasons for that. Um, in fact, it makes the algebra um, somewhat easier. Um, radians really requires that you are flexible and good with fractions. Okay, simple fractions, but fractions. Um, but if you can get your head around the fractions, it's really not very complicated. Okay, um, let's start with um, something called the unit circle. So much of what we're going to cover over the course of this topic derives from this unit circle. So the unit circle being a circle with a radius of one, its center at the origin, and its center at the origin. So we've got a, a unit circle pictured there. So if we had a, a unit circle, that is a circle with a radius of one and center at the origin, what would be the circumference of the unit circle? So we know that circumference for any circle is 2 pi r. And so therefore the circumference for the unit circle would be 2 pi times 1, and so 2 pi. So the circumference, if we were to walk our way around the edge of this circle, for example, um, we would and go the whole way, we would walk a distance of 2 pi, whatever the units are. Okay. Alright, so um, a radian is the size of the angle created by moving one unit around the unit circle. Okay, so let's just get a sense of that. I'm just in my gaz over here. I'm just going to type 2 pi and just uh, be clear about roughly how big that is. That's about 6.28. So what we're saying here is that if we were to walk around the circumference of this unit circle completely, we would walk a distance of 6.28 units. If we were to walk just so that we only do one unit, so that's about a sixth of this, okay? Just roughly. So let's say we walk, so that is one unit there, okay? So the whole way around the circle, my apologies, the whole way around the circle is about six units, or 6.3 units, let's say. Um, but if we walk just a distance of one unit, so about a sixth of the way around the circle. The angle that we create at the center of the circle by doing that, so the angle that we've created in here is one radian. Okay, So one unit around the circumference, of which there are two pi units in total, um, will create one radian. And the notation that we use for radian is a little c. Um, sorry, it's a, I've got a slightly fat pen today, um, and so it looks slightly large, but a, a sort of upper, a, a, a C sort of in the power. So in one revolution of the unit circle, there are going to be, therefore, if we can, if we can walk, if the circumference is two pi um, units long, and if we walk one unit, we create one radian, therefore we know that in one complete lap of the circle, it's possible to walk two pi units, and so therefore there must be two pi radians in one complete lap of the circle. So all the way around here, we're walking a distance of two pi units, and so we're creating an angle of two pi radians, okay? So that's, that's one of the key um, conversion understandings. 360 degrees is the same as two pi radians, okay? 
Actually, a simpler conversion routine then is that a conversion measure is that pi radians, therefore, is 180 degrees. And to be honest, if this is all you ever remember and this is what you come back to every time, we can always work everything out. Okay, I'm going to here give you formulas for converting, but I, it, it's really unhelpful to think about converting between degrees and radians in using formulas. We actually, it's easier to think about what fraction of 180 degrees is this. So, for example, 60 degrees is one third of 180 degrees. Given that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians, that means 60 degrees is the same as one third of pi, or pi on three radians. Okay, so it's all about fractions. What fraction of 180 degrees is it? So, but we can create some formulas, um, although again, I want to be cautious about this. So if pi radians equals 180 degrees, we can divide both sides of that relationship by pi to tell us that that means that one radian is 180 on pi um, degrees. Or we can divide both sides of that relationship by 180 to find that one degree is pi on 180 radians. Okay, so therefore, if we're converting from radians to degrees, if one radian is 180 pi on 180 on pi, then multiplying by 180 over pi is going to give us radians to degrees, and then degrees to radians. Obviously, we could say divide by 180 over pi, but that's the same as multiplying by pi on 180. Okay, but again, I don't want you to think too much about formula. I want you to be able to think in terms of fractions. It'll help you much more throughout the topic. So convert pi on 4 radians to degrees. Okay, so if we use the formula, we can do um, pi on 4 multiplying that by 180 on pi. The pi's will cancel out. We get 180 on 4 and 180 divided by 4 is 45. Now again, if you think about what we've ended up with here, you should really be able to get to this thinking straight away without needing a formula. Pi on 4 radians, convert that to degrees. Well, pi is the same as 180 degrees. So I've simply got, if this is a quarter of pi, it's a quarter of 180 degrees. And so therefore, it's 450. Okay. So again, this, this step here, thinking about formula, should be really secondary to thinking about this conceptually. Okay. Um, I've got a quarter of pi radians. And so therefore, I have a quarter of 180 degrees. So again, this one over here, the second example, part B, convert 30 degrees to radians. Okay, we can say, well, 30 degrees, we multiply that by pi on 180, um, which means 30 on 180 cancels down to 1 on 6, so this is pi on 6 radians. Okay, so again, we want to think really about, rather than um, needing a formula, what fraction of 30 degrees is 180? 30 out of 180 is 1 sixth, and so therefore we have 1 sixth of pi. Is essentially what we're doing. Convert 5 pi on 3 to rate, um, sorry, to degrees. My apologies. All right, so again, we can use our formula if we want. 5 pi on 3 multiplied by 180 on pi, but what we're really doing here is understanding we have 5 thirds of pi, which is 5 thirds of 180. 1 third of 180 is 60, and so therefore 5 thirds of 180 is 300. Okay? And again, you know, the pi's cancel out, and that's exactly what you're doing, 5 thirds times 180. Okay. And again, that number work needs to be familiar. What's a third of 180 and therefore what's 5 thirds of 180? If you're doing 5 thirds of 180, you shouldn't be doing 5 times 180 and then dividing that by 3. Divide by 3 and then times by 5. Okay, Just, you know, flexible number work. Convert 52 degrees to radians. Okay, now this one's a bit more complicated because 52, I'm not as, it's not an obvious fraction of 180. Um, so maybe in this case I resort a bit to formula, but the formula is still requiring me to understand that really what I'm doing is 52 divided by 180 and multiplying that by pi. Okay, sorry. Uh, we can simplify the fraction. 52 and 180, they're both uh, divisible by 4. It might be divisible by more, but let's see. Um, 52 I know is divisible by 4 if I know about a pack of cards. So 13 and 180 divided by 4 is going to be 45. So 13 pi on uh, 45. So uh, not the nicest. So in radians. Now it should also be noted that an angle with no units, and that's noted down here, an angle with no units is assumed to be in radians. So we wouldn't normally actually write this little C up here in um, parts B and D. We would just, if we're talking about angles, the angle is pi on 6, we would understand that to be radians. If we're talking about an angle and we say the angle is 30, we would need to specify that it is 30 degrees. 
All right, um, changing the angle mode of your CAS. Um, so your angle, the angle mode, I've got the CAS over here on the left. Up the top, if you hover over the battery, it'll tell you, but it says in shorthand RAD, telling me my CAS is currently in radian mode. Um, yours might not be. Document settings. Sorry, I'll go back and show you what I did then. So clicking, just click on the battery. So hover up to the battery and just click in the middle of your click pad. Okay. Um, and then document settings, number two. And you want um, the angle mode to be in radian. Okay, so if you're currently in degrees, what you'll see in your CAS is it'll say deg in the top right, short for degrees, um, and you're going to want to change that into radians. Now a little bit throughout your 11 circular functions we'll, we'll switch a bit between degrees and radians just because degrees are a bit more familiar to you at this point. Um, so there might be need for you to change that mode. Okay, so thinking really clearly about what mode am I in and is that important here and, and sh what mode should I be in. Okay, so if you're getting unexpected answers, the first thing you should be thinking about is changing the angle mode of your CAS. Can I clarify that that's not a question I can answer for you when you find yourself stuck in a sack or um, in a test or an exam? You know, oh, my CAS is in the wrong, wrong mode, how do I change it again? That's up to you to know. Okay, so this is part of what you need to know and understand. Uh, okay, so the work for today, just a small amount of work um, in exercise 14A.